Hello YouTube, it's Evelyn here. Today I'm excited to announce I'll be reviewing Season 2 of Interview with a Vampire. In my channel you can see a playlist of Season 1. I did all the episodes of the review. Let me tell you, even though the series has changes from the book, the show writers and the show producers have adapted the material to make it as free as reading the book is understandable. So the beginning of the episode starts with a recap of season one in which we see that Louis calls Daniel Molloy, already at an older age, to revisit the interview that they did originally in San Francisco in 1972 in which we see that Daniel is suffering from Parkinson's disease even though that he travels to Dubai to meet Louis and Louis is not alone he's with the man servant Rashid and of course through the recap was a montage of Louis's story how he met Lestat got turned into a vampire and when Claudia came into the picture and ultimately it was Lestat's death at the hands of Claudia and Louis even though Claudia was the mastermind. But of course on the last episode of season one we see that Daniel uses his journalistic skills to see that Louis is editing what's the past so he pushes Louis at the end of episode one to reveal that he didn't burn Lestat's body as he originally said. He stopped Claudia from for burning Lestat's body and stuff stuffed Lestat's body in the suitcase that had the inner locks. And of course, AK, no surprise, Lestat is alive for those who read the books like me. And of course, ultimately at the end, we have the big reveal that the man, so Rashid, was Omar in disguise, the vampire Omar. Now, let's put aside the description wise because for people who haven't read the book, it would make no difference and it makes sense. And let me repeat again, as the person that read all the book, mostly all the books in high school, we, uh, Amar's description is of like an angelic 16 year old boy, but that doesn't matter. The actor playing Amar, I think he's called Asad, Asad? Oh, apologies, I'll put his name here. What a beautiful specimen of a guy looking. You can see the age and the kind of like, I don't want to say wisdom, he gets revealed at the end that Amar is like 500 years old, the sun doesn't affect him. In episode 1 we get a bit more details about Amar's kind of like habits as an old vampire. And of course to the horror of Daniel because in the first season we see that antagonistic kind of relationship he has with Rashid aka Amar. So episode 1 opens up with Louis narrating that both Claudia and him travel to Romania in the search of vampires. Time wise it's said before, at the end of World War II, after when the war was won, we get the sense that Louis is lost. He's only following Claudia because he doesn't want to be alone. And of course, the guilt of murdering Lestat essentially is weighing on Louis's mind. And we get the dream stat. I see that term is go going around. That would have never, that would have never crossed my mind. That kind of term. Because when uh, Claudia is feeding off one of these like dead, like one of these uh, wounded soldiers. Louis gets a manifestation of Lestat reappearing. At first, people that maybe not seen season one thinking Lestat is already there, but it's Louis's hallucination and guilt of Le of uh, killing Lestat in which they start having that interaction. Now, let me tell you about Sam Reed. What a another beautiful specimen of an actor. Jacob as well, who plays Louis, beautiful guy. It's like they chose the ensemble cast that has the beauty and the essence of these characters. So as as we see through the episode, we get scenes of the interview at present time. We see that Daniel's trying to uncover more stuff about Omar, and we can see Daniel pushing more his luck, and we kind of see that he's in a hostage like situation. We feel that Louis has humanity within him, he's not going to bump off um, Daniel, but however, Omar is not really happy with Daniel. He's only doing this for the sake of pleasing Louis or trying to still be with him because I can't wait for episode two that we get the sense how Lestat and Omar met, even though in the books that's never happened. Now, let's forget about the books for one minute. As the narration progresses from Louis and we get back to the scenes, we see that Claudia and Louis reach a small town in Romania that's occupied by the Soviets because of course historically the Soviets helped 
within the war to, against the Nazis. And they both see soldier, they both, Claudia and Louis, see soldiers opening up the coffins of the recently deceased and shooting them. And it leaves the big question in everybody's mind, like why they're shooting dead bodies. So of course, Romania being the home of Transylvania, Count Dracula, you know, they're trying to find any semblance of the old world vampires. But of course, Louis has his reservations, I think, but all honesty, Louis wants to probably erase what happened in the last 10 years. The episodes also highlight the struggles of the town of people trying to, you know, reclaim their lives after the war. As they go into the village, they see the doors with well, crosses and garlic being hung. And Claudia is happy going, oh my god, it's vampires, but Louis is like, it's not, stop, you know. Even though that Louis is a vampire himself, he tries to be rational, that's all like fairy tales. So Claudia and Louis, they get kind of like, sa not saved. These uh, Soviet soldiers are questioning Louis and Claudia about like, for obvious reasons why they're there. And they get sa saved by the town head called Emilia. I think her name was Emilia, which she tells the both of the soldiers, it's dangerous to stay in the night. We know, quote unquote, that there's vampires there, there's some kind of monster, but the townspeople, their superstitions and stuff, half believe and half don't. So Emilia takes Claudia and Louis to the town hall in which they bump into an English journalist can't remember the guy's name and during those conversations Claudia is very direct telling them like why they're shooting the bodies but now the, uh, the new actress playing Claudia I like her Delaney and I find it respectful that the showrunners did put this not a disclaimer an announcement saying that the role of Claudia being now played by this other by the other actress so they pay you know respect and homage that they don't discount Bailey Bass's contributions as Claudia from season one. Through the conversations the uh, journalist and Louis direct Claudia to go with the kids and Louis kind of like tells Claudia in, in so many other words she can find out more if there really is vampires by the kids. So through an innocent there, Claudia goes through like a gap in which she sees this kind of like zombie-like vampire there feeding off somebody. Now I'm gonna jump now to the present day flashback. We see that Louis is having some sort of kind of like, not breakdown, he's reminiscing to the past of that extent and Daniel really getting Louis to be honest with himself. He goes and tells Daniel, he thanks him for, you know, helping him to resolve these issues and he becomes starts to become emotional even like blood tears start to drip down a little bit and Daniel's like you can take the break if you want to <laughs> Daniel's like at what moment Louis going to snap and like do god knows what in a fit of rage because in season one Daniel pushed and pushed Louis and which caused Louis to mind control Daniel from like spazzing out his hand which of course made da Daniel frightened for obvious reasons and he infamously slapped Louis even though Louis it, he wouldn't have felt a thing. Uh, so, okay, we jump forward. Claudia meets the vampire. She tries to contact with the uh, zombie vampire. Telepathy kind of makes his attention aware, but he flings Claudia against the boulder. Now, I'll explain briefly that the English journalist tells um, Louis, look, this picture you're carrying around that pretending to be Claudia's mom, which is the sister of Louis, it's about 30 years, 30 years old. And he says, they should put this woman at 60. So the journalist is also very good at examining the situation and trying to distinguish whether he was a defector from the Soviets or from somewhere else. But of course, I'm not going to go into the race topic here because because they do make comments when Louis and Claudia are traveling to different areas and with fake papers saying that they're Ukrainian and the soldiers go and say black Ukrainian. So it's okay they're being rational of the times so as when claudia comes back with her shoulder popped out telling you know louis dad that she has something to say while they're in the boiler room claudia tells louis that she found the vampire and louis trying to rationalize it saying that maybe he's an animal or even worse a baboon but of course even in our own ears louis rationality tried to reasoning sounds irrational so Oh yeah, I kind of mixed up the scene. When they're in the boiler room sleeping, that's when Louis has the breakdown about reminiscing of the past because he does describe about that Claudia was dreaming because he initially makes these comments about the absence of dreaming and that's when he has that little breakdown with the blood tears. So. 
fact, jump forward when Claudia and Louis wake up that there's a big commotion. The town head Emily, unfortunately, she gets bitten by the by all means the zombie vampire and the townspeople they know there's vampires there and the poor journalist guy trying to save his partner because they were like in a relationship and pleading to Louis but Louis like us as vampires we don't interfere in human business and one of the other women within the village tells the soldier you can't shoot the lady you have to chop off the head and which they do, but off camera. So Claudia and Louis lure, lure the zombie vampire with a soldier that they went and I think cut off the leg or snapped off the leg. So the leg's like splurting blood all over. The zombie vampire comes and they try to introduce themselves saying like, we're vampires too. And the zombie vampire is not really like listening. And Louis is like, is this a vampire? And then Chloe's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, it's more like a catfish with fangs. And before anything else can happen, Louis gets attacked by a female, feral looking vampire, but she has clothes and stuff. She looks in somewhat of a better shape than the other one. And Louis is fighting with the woman and the zombie vampire comes to intervene. And Claudia has a gun. She tries to shoot at the area, but ends up jumping on the zombie vampire's back. And we have the shot of Claudia taking the eyeballs out and Louis are like scratched up. The woman vampire says in that, I, I assume Romanian that you went in, how can my child hunt without eyes? So we get a graphic scene of the woman bludgeoning the zombie vampire with a, with a rock on the head and we get the understanding, okay, the, her child has no eyes so be no use for hunting. So the woman goes off into the woods and both Louis and Claudia follow the woman into the castle now this is the bit where episode 1 plays into okay you're an immortal vampire but you get lonely and what's the purpose of the existence of being a vampire because in before scenes uh, Louis does explain to Claudia how far do you want to take this to find out about our origins you're gonna find Adam and Eve of the damned now they keep on repeating the word damned Queen of the Damned. I have a lot of theories about how this series is, how season two is going to end, how it will interview, how it will probably mix with the book called Merrick for the life of me, which the main protagonist and there's Louis trying to get in contact with Claudia, finds the witch, X, Y, and Z, and okay, I won't be any potential spoilers. Maybe in the next video I'll reveal more my theory, one of my theories, and also uh, the other theory that I see floating ar around that for season three it could be Lestat's turn to get interviewed by Daniel. Now there's a multitude of possibilities that they can go. It, it, this series could go for like 10 seasons and still not cover the breadth and depth of Anne Rice's world of the vampires. Well anyway, moving off topic, I even forgot where I was. Okay, so they go back into the castle, they start trying to communicate with the woman and they let her know that they came from over the ocean and they see that the woman is trying to convert more people into vampires but they're just not having it. The, the way she explained it is that these people don't want to live and Louis it explains through Claudia translating that there's too much sadness and sickness and death and it's affecting the blood and they want to I don't know why they want to convince this woman to go with them uh, by all means yeah find vampires but not all of them are gonna be nice company you want to be with somebody that you can have a nice company they think they're making headway with this woman the woman reveals that the other vampires have died for whatever reasons and just when they think that the, that she's gonna go with them because she says oh my name is so and so and Lou and Claudia introduce themselves and then the next thing we know after the woman saying like oh, oh the beautiful possibilities all of us together she will get in her strength x y instead instead she throws herself into the fireplace and she ends up killing herself to the the, to the horror of Claudia so we get the present scene of Daniel well of Louis and Amard in the bedroom together and they say and Amard said something interesting that the boy that they met of Daniel years ago in San Francisco is still there and they want to unlock that part so they could so that part of Daniel can tell them what happened next now the original interview in 1972 what of this timeline something must have happened after when Daniel got bitten by Louis uh, the circumstances why we heard on season one the audio but something else happened because Daniel's memory got scrambled he didn't remember meeting Amard at all which was revealed in season one and what else was edited in Daniel's mind but there must have been a, there's a big reason there's a big reason like uh, 
why in the world are they doing this interview again? And I think Daniel is trying to, I think Daniel knows in the back of his mind. And I think that's one of the reasons he's really pushing both of them to reveal what the hell is going on. So we get to the last part of the episode in which Amara finally says that he's putting himself within the interview. And of course Daniel's like, Okay, he goes in the in the recording. This is session, let's say, 10 with the vampire Louis and the vampire Armand. And Mara starts, Louis then goes, starts to say, after what Claudia saw, she was left completely devastated. And then Omar jumps in and says, oh, at that time, my coven in Paris sends. And then before he could say anything else, but then he goes, wait, 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 I'll get to you in a minute. So we get to the last bit, a very powerful, well, to me it felt powerful, the music, the tension and the drama that Louis telling Claudia, okay, I'm going to tell you, hard things and soft things. The hard things is, our life is the way, the way it is, it might it'll go, it'll continue to be that way, and but suck it up, nobody cares and nobody's watching. And the soft things that as long as you're alive Claudia I'll never see the fire myself AK Louis basically saying I'll I won't take my life as long as you're alive now fire is another important thing when I review episode 2 I would tell you further my theory to keep on going on about fire 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 anybody who's read the book Merrick I'm rise, you'll know where I'm getting at. And also in season one, R Rashid Amar, whatever, said that, that this interview is essentially Louis' suicide. Okay, now we get to the part in which both Claudia and Louis finally make it to Paris, and then we see the joy and the renewal of hope. And then that ends episode one. Woo! We're 17 minutes in the video. There was so much to discuss and talk about. Oh, I, I can't wait for the flashback scenes of... Uh, it's, it's not a big spoiler. They put Lestat as the leader or co-founder of the Theatre of Vampires. Or Vampire, whatever pronunciation it is. And we might get end up getting Lestat's backstory story of him being like the wolf hunter we see i've seen clips of lester having longer blonde hair looking majestic oh there's so much possibilities i can't wait to see episode two on like comes out on sunday but hopefully i'll see it on monday whatever anyway uh, you let me know the original viewers who've seen these videos with me of the series and the books you let me know what you thought about episode one to any new viewers really appreciate it click the subscribe button leave your comments down below and to any current subscribers a big thank you for still watching these videos and as i leave you always stay safe